We have a new update from Capture One version 16.5.2. I'm going to go over what is in this and show you the benefits of these updates. It's not a major update. It's just a, a service update. So we we'll want to start off talking about user experience and performance improvements first, as usual. First, we have faster people masking, which is great. So all the elements that are break down a mask, the hair, the eyes, the skin, now uh, twice as fast and match look processes two to three times faster. All of these AI models built into the software are just getting faster and faster and better and better. Capture One is also reporting improvements in their catalog performance and they say they've optimized the autosave and that improves the responsiveness of the catalog and it reduces hanging for large or complex catalogs because if you're working in a large catalog like I tend to have and it's doing an autosave, that autosave can just, just hang for a little bit and you can't really uh, do much. So they've optimized the autosave to improve the responsiveness and reducing the hanging for large catalogs. In the focus tool, there's improved face recognition. So the AI model has been improved for center to eye and center to face accuracy. So if we take a look at the focus tool, I've got a photo of Maggie here and uh, center to eye and center to face. You can see the, the changes here are much, uh, they're much faster and they're more accurate. There's center to face and there is center to eye. Something that I noticed the other day, I had to reactivate Capture One. They now have no key activation, which means you don't have to type in a physical key. You do need an internet connection. It will connect to Capture One's website and grab your account information, show that you do have an active subscription and it will activate the software for you, provided that you have uh, seats available in, in your account to activate the software. You can also sign in with uh, Apple, Google and Microsoft accounts as well. We have camera support for Nikon Z52, the Panasonic Lumix DCS9, and Panasonic Lumix DCGH7. If we look at the Keystone tool, the handles that you have to line up your Keystone now when you start moving them around are acting as small loops. This is great. What I used to do is I would bring my lines uh, here and I would try to just run the line down the side of the building because I couldn't line up where exactly that little spot was, especially tricky on a, on a 4K monitor when things are a little smaller, you really have to like zoom in. But now you're getting a magnification at 200%. So you can much more easily uh, line up your indicators, your keystone indicators, and set your uh, keystone. Uh, also in the keystone tools, if you are shooting stills photography with an anamorphic lens, significant improvements in the keystone tools for you. Now, if we're looking at exports and we're creating a new recipe, we have now a copy original files recipe. When we take a look at this, Basically what this recipe is doing is it's giving us a place to move the file. It's keeping the format the same as the original and you can export that as an EIP as well. Also in export recipes, we can see that for JPEGs, we have a new button that says uh, target size and we can limit the target size in terms of megabytes. And when we export our images, the quality is gonna be based on the file size limitations. They've made some additions to their uh, API integration with Photo Room, which is not a software I use. So I can't really talk about that too much, but on Windows, you now have background replacement with support for exporting your images as transparent PNG files. On Mac OS, uh, you can now expand the image background using Photo Room. And um, for both of those, you need a Photo Room uh, API access. If we look at our cloud settings, uh, we can see that besides styles, workplaces, export recipes, keyboard shortcuts, we also now have tool presets. So our tool presets are being synced to the cloud and uh, we can download them on uh, another system. And finally, the update I was waiting for in the older version of Capture One, uh, we had just a single setting in people masking for eyes. So now, uh, if we if we look at the people mask, we'll see that we can separate the sclera and the pupil and the iris, which is great because I definitely want those separate. What what I was doing with the AI is that I would create an eye mask and now I have the mask and then I would set a luma range to try to not include the whites, the white section of the eyes. And then once I had had that mask set, then I could come in and 
do things independently, but you can still see it's not doing things totally perfect because that mask isn't perfect, but the AI masking is a lot better. So update your version of Capture One. You can do that in the app. Just go to help and check for updates. And if you're not up to date, then it will prompt you to install the latest version. And just think of all the time you're gonna save editing with these features. What you can do at that time is actually work on the SEO on your website. And it just so happens that I recently released an ebook called The Ultimate SEO Guide for Photographers. It's a comprehensive SEO guide. I've seen some SEO guides online for photographers that are like six pages. Mine is uh, over 120 pages. It is in depth. It tells you what you need to do, how to do it. What I've also done is I've put together sort of a timeline because if it all feels a little much and a little daunting, then you can schedule it out. There's a checklist of things to do. Hey, do this this week, do this this week, however you want to do it. But it gives you very specific incremental steps on things that you can do to improve the SEO on your website. And SEO is something that I've been doing uh, longer than I've been a professional photographer. Check that out. I'm going to put the link in the description below. I really appreciate your support in picking up that guide. I'm really proud of it and I hope you like it too.